How's it going, guys? 1.40 a.m., 20th of February here in Japan. Pass a little question for Repro Step 1, OBGYN for TCK. Very basic, very easy, okay? Just hop to the answer choices and not waste our time. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate it. Give me a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, Melman underscore medical. M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to Telegram group and channel down below. Now start the clip. 20-year-old woman. She has a regular menses. 24 to 30, 32 day intervals for the past three years, BMI 27, mild acne on the upper back and face. Question just simply wants to know uh, what's most likely to be seen. Okay, so let's just hop to the answer choice here. Choice A, PGF2 alpha, hypersecretion, wrong fucking answer. This is the answer on USMLE for primary dysmenorrhea, which is going to be normal period pain in most women. Okay, so they'll give you any girl who's a teenager up to age 23 uh, ish, my observation on BMEs. And they'll just say, OMG, period pain is so bad, she has to miss school. And they'll tell you physical exam shows no abnormalities. That's just prostaglandin hypersecretion, PGF2 alpha hypersecretion. That's called primary dysmenorrhea. And you just treat with NSAIDs, okay? Now, in contrast, if they want endometriosis on your simile, you need to not rely on dyspareunia, which is pain during sex, as well as pain with defecation, you need to not rely on those descriptors as a crutch. They're too easy and you assembly usually omits them. So what they're gonna do for endometriosis is tell you 23 year old girl, OMG, painful period, so bad she has to miss class. But then the physical exam shows some sort of abnormality. They'll say, for example, there's nodularity of the uterosacral ligaments. It doesn't matter. It's just, there's going to be some form of uh, physical exam abnormality, whereas with primary dysmenorrhea, PGF2 alpha prescription, there's no abnormality. Wrong fucking answer for both of these. Choice C, increased follicle stimulating hormone, wrong fucking answer. So this patient here has anovulation, has PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Now anovulation, PCOS are the same thing for all intents and purposes. We just call anovulation PCOS when we have hirsutism. Plus, if we do an ultrasound of the ovaries, we see at least 11 cysts bilaterally as per Amsterdam criteria. But what you need to know for US Simulian, cutting to the chase, all right? You're gonna get a question. They're gonna say a female has high BMI. Doesn't have to be obese, just slightly elevated BMI plus abnormal periods equals anovulation until proven otherwise. So this is what's gonna happen. High BMI means insulin resistance. Insulin resistance, for whatever fucking reason, can cause abnormal GnRH pulsation, which results in a high LH to FSH ratio. LH is up, that is our correct answer here. FSH is decreased, okay, and the ratio is high. Some students say, well, aren't both increased, it's just the ratio is high. No, that's fucking wrong, okay? If they give you an arrow question, you're gonna select a down arrow for FSH. All right, so you have a high LH to FSH ratio. So insulin resistance causes abnormal GnRH pulsation, causes high LH to FSH ratio. LH normally acts on the theca interna cells in the ovaries to secrete androgens. Well, LH is high, so that's why we have hirsutism here. FSH normally acts on the granulosa cells to secrete aromatase, as well as stimulates the follicular development. So if FSH is low, then your follicular development is going to be slowed. So by the time LH spike occurs to trigger ovulation, well, the follicles aren't ready for rupture. So we do not have a graphene follicle that ruptures. We do not get a corpus luteum. Corpus luteum normally secretes progesterone, which will maintain the endometrial lining if we have a pregnancy. So because we do not get a corpus luteum and we do not get progesterone production, we have what's called unopposed estrogen, meaning over the course of the female's life, she's going to have lower progesterone secretion than she should have. And that's a risk factor for endometrial hyperplasia and in turn endometrial carcinoma. So, so estrogen stimulates endometrial growth, progesterone limits endometrial growth. So for OBGYN questions, for example, they can just give you an overweight woman who's 60, who has vaginal bleeding, and they just want you to know that's endometrial cancer, you're gonna do endometrial biopsy. Okay, student says, well, how do we jump to that conclusion so fast? Well, that's what OBGYN questions will do. They'll just say, well, she's overweight. Presumably it meant that she had anovulatory cycles when she was younger. So 
she's got unopposed estrogen in her history and she has endometrial cancer. So we have we have decreased GnRH here, abnormal GnRH pulsation. We would select decreased GnRH if anything. So this mechanism of anovulation slash PCOS, exceedingly high yield for USMLA. You know the deal to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.